Stan Jabalisco here. I would like to explain to you why this practice, backfeeding the power from an emergency generator into an electrical outlet for use throughout your house, why that is something I would not do. Now I will um, preface all of this by saying that I am not a professional electrician. My specialty is radio frequency engineering, specifically antennas for ham radio operators, but I do know enough about electrical wiring in a house to say that this is a bad idea, and the first reason that I'd like to cite is that as far as I am aware, doing this violates the National Electrical Code. Now, of course, everybody has something in their house that violates the uh, National Electrical Code, some provision or another of it, most likely. Uh, just like everybody commits some sort of a crime almost every day, from what I've heard uh, by definition. But this particular practice, as far as I'm aware, violates the National Electrical Code. What you do if there's a power outage, say during a, a storm, is you shut off the main breaker at your house first. Now here are the two circuits. They're generally one of them is in opposite phase with respect to the other one. So what they, uh, what I have seen, some videos of people doing this during storms, feeding electrical power into one outlet on one of these circuits, switching the main breaker off first, supposedly to keep the electricity from your generator from getting out into the utility line and to prevent bucking of the utility power to the generator power when the power comes back on. So you feed... Uh, you feed your AC into one of these breakers. And then presumably, if all the other breakers are closed, it will distribute this power to all of the circuits on this uh, particular side of the house where this phase operates. The other side, well, you're kind of out of luck there. Uh, but you can at least uh, distribute power to some of your appliances, supposedly. Well, breakers are usually 15 or 20 amperes. Let's just suppose that all of these are 15 amp breakers. If you backfeed through one of these 15 amp breakers, then supposedly, as far as I'm aware, that's going to be the maximum amount of uh, current, or yes, the maximum amount of alternating current that you'll be able to deliver to this entire side of the house, all these other breakers notwithstanding. All of the electricity has to pass through this one breaker in order to get to the others or in order to get to the central part of the circuit. So if you load down too many of these other circuits so that the total is more than 15 amps, that breaker right there is going to trip, which is probably just as well it, uh, it would be with my generator because my generator uh, doesn't want to provide more than 15 amperes anyway. So it would be, in that sense, a little bit of a safety precaution. But imagine, you know, you have your refrigerator on one of these and maybe, I don't know, a water heater on one of them. And your refrigerator kicks on, this breaker goes. Or you have a lot of lights on or something like that. You're, you're probably going to have problems of that sort. But the main objection that I have to it, and the reason I would never do it, is that it violates the National Electrical Code and if there was a fire in my house during an outage, God forbid, an electrical fire particularly, and the insurance company found out I'd been doing this, they probably would not pay my claim. They might even void my policy. Moreover, I have heard stories about power getting out onto this utility line despite the fact that the main breaker is open. <coughs> now, I don't know... Uh, how that could happen personally myself. Like I said, I'm not a professional electrician, but I have heard stories that that can happen, and I don't think anybody wants to run the risk of electrocuting a lineman who might come along and start working on the line outside of your house. Uh, moreover, should you happen to forget about s turning the generator off and disconnecting it before you turn that main breaker back on, when the utility power comes back on, if you switch that main on, just happen to forget to switch it on while that generator is still connected and running, 
then the utility current is going to buck the generator current. More than likely it'll blow the fuse in the generator, but it could also produce more serious side effects, which would wake you up in a hurry. So I wouldn't do this. Um, I've, uh, as I said, I've seen people uh, make videos uh, that uh, where they show that uh, you should do this. In fact, I saw one of them that said, now, here's how you can do it, but don't you dare ever try it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm telling you, here's how you can do it, and don't you dare ever try it. I'm telling you the exact same thing. The only th thing is they recommended in, in, in implicitly that they are doing it. Let's say, here's how I wouldn't, this is what I would not do, and I recommend that you don't do it either. I, th I think that uh, you can always just feed individual appliances as you need them with separate extension cords into that generator physically and totally, completely isolated from the main utility. Uh, so you can take this for what it's worth, uh, but that's my advice to you, uh, non-electrician that I may be. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Until next time. So long.